Okay, we're gonna lick, drink, eat. Okay. Two, the new year. <laughs> now we're on. Welcome to Cancel the SA. It's another week. <laughs> welcome. <of> yes, <laughs> it's another week. And and welcome. Welcome again. It is cancelled podcast. Yeah. Um the first topic, the car crash that killed, you know, youngsters of the Amapiano movement. Kilagao and Bura and their DJs, uh, Kanya Katebe and Sandro Tot, happened at, on the 9th of August in the wee hours of the morning. And it's a sad, it's a sad death. It's like, guys, I feel like South Africa doesn't get a break. It's been sad for weeks now, bruh. Like, left, right, center. What was it that... Uh, Ramaphosa said in December, he's like, for some people, this is going to be their last Christmas. Homie was not playing, bruh. He was not playing because it is dark in these streets. Every week we're mourning somebody new. And this one is particularly sad because it's so many individuals that got, got killed in this, um, in this accident. Mm. Excluding the performers, of course, there was also Oprah Sanza that also passed mm. on. So it's it's really a sad situation. Like, I think the country has been mourning. Oh, and I think we're tired of mourning. We are, you know, and I think that this is a perfect time for the president to open the Gakem country. I want to wake up at a club. Hmm? <laughs> you know, um... Speaking of that, one of the things that one of the um, artists mentioned on Twitter was that the reason why artists are in a rush to get from one place to another is because of the the whole lockdown regulation. The curfews. Yeah, so it's restricting artists from reaching locations um, in time. Yeah, and also, I mean, artists want to bag the money. You know, they want to make sure that they're there on time. So for people who are questioning why were they driving at the wee hours of the morning of the curfew, whatever, hey man, they were just they were just trying to to meet time. You know, better be there on time than to be there late and not get paid. True, true. And but, that's a wild yeah. one. Like I would think that there were people who got work permits, right? The permits that allow them to move around after hours because I guess initially when this started, it was for essential workers. But mm -hmm. now I'm assuming with the country opening up and more services being opened up, that it would open up to more individuals, not just your your doctors and stuff, but people who need to um, travel, for example, overnight in order to get to their gigs from one gig to another. And that feeds back into the economy. I think that would be something worthwhile. I thought that that was a thing. I saw Uzodwa recently. She she did a video where she posted um, cops that had stopped her and they wanted a permit and she showed them her work permit. So I guess if Zodwa has one, I would assume other people would also have um, work permits to travel after hours. She still got arrested though, allegedly, apparently. I don't yeah. know how she... I saw that video. I was just like, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Yeah, it it was it's it's such sticky waters these days. Like, hey guys, you never know. Like these days, if you're gonna break the law or not, just by saying something or doing something, it's crazy. Yeah, and also with the death of you know the young stars, the young pioneers of the Amapian movement. The one sad thing about it is that they will go down in history, similar to your Alia, your Tupac, your Biggie, your Left Eye where they were very young hopefuls in the music industry that had so much potential, but their lives got cut short because of life. Yeah. Um, no, definitely. They're going to they're gonna be those people that are the pillars of the culture when we're talking about Amapiano. Like, we'll never forget them. If there's ever a documentary that's made, if there's any story that's told about 
I'm a piano and how it became what it is today. You can't tell that story without mentioning these names. At this point, you really can't tell that story without saying and giving respect to these young men. And um, yeah, so, yeah, it's very dark, guys. Very dark. It's so sad. It's very sad also having these young lives lost, cut short and with so much potential. Like, there's so much they could have done. I think that's one of... Um, I forgot who it was, and again, I'm so bad with names, but one of the guys that spoke at his funeral actually said that um, in his message, he was like, we may have our own plans, but, and I think he was actually referencing a Bible verse, but yeah, essentially, we all have our own plans, but God has his own plan, and it's it's ultimately up to him. But yeah, um, that day, RIP to the homies, RIP to the homies. Rest in peace to the homies, and also um, Jezik. Because Jezik and Bura were friends since high school. See? And for, for him, I think, I'm not saying that other artists are experiencing less pain or whatever, but for Jezik, he lost a confidant, he lost a friend, he lost a childhood, a childhood buddy. They grew up together, they've always been together, they shared a lot, and yeah, man, my condolences to him because, you know, most of people on Twitter, and we've said this before, to say that um, breaking up with a partner is, is is hectic, but breaking up with a friend is way hectic. Bruh, that but one cuts deep. A friend, you know? That one cuts deep, bruh. Yeah. That one cuts deep. Like a boyfriend, a girlfriend, whatever, you know, you know that in life you're going to go through a bunch like at some point, some people <laughs> may marry the first person they date, but then most likely you're going to date a couple of people in life. But then with friendships, you expect your friendships to last um, for as long as possible. You're actually, girl, while we on that note, I'm going to flip it up a bit as we talk about French. Really highlights this friendship situation. I, I like how this girl said it in her video. She's like, my... And I think she <laughs> she even stopped the video, came back, and she's like, frenemy. I don't know how to say yeah. it, but I'm going to say frenemy. I was <laughs> like, dang. I skimmed through the video. I won't lie. It was 45 minutes long. I was like, come on. Yo, how long is this story about this car accident? And she took a while to get to the point. But I'm also still confused about how this accident happened. I feel like she still didn't tell us. She doesn't know. Exactly. I was just like, <laughs> how? Do, like I under, like you hear those stories that like before something traumatic happened, you know your brain protects you. It protects mm. you from experiencing that trauma, and you forget. So maybe mm. that's what it was. But I'm just like. But where did your friend go? And then she tagged her. Dude, I was just like, no, this is wild. She tagged her in pictures later on, acting like they were together while this girl was in the hospital. Listen, the girl, her name is, I, I call her Cayenne Bougie, but apparently it's Cyan Bougie. Can I say something about her, na- her name? Um, mm-hmm. Cyan, I don't know why she chose that name because I'm I'm assuming it's not her her, her God given her parents her government name. Let me say, you know, no, I don't know what not. her God given name is, but it's, I'm pretty sure it's not her government name. But did you know that Cyan, um, is well, there's this substance called cyanide, <laughs> and according to um the CDC's website, I've just googled it now. Cyanide is a rapidly acting, potentially deadly chemical. <laughs> that can exist in various forms. It can be colorless gas, such as hydrogen cyanide, or cyanide chloride, chloride, or a crystal form such as sodium cyanide or potassium cyanide. I'm just, you know, like, because I remember you sent me that voice note, and you're like, cayenne cyanide, I don't know how to say a name. I was like, wait, cyanide, isn't that? That immediately, the first thing I thought of was cyanide. But I, that's just a different point. It has nothing to do with the story. I'm not saying the girl is poison. I'm just saying, why would she choose that name? But it, <laughs> that's besides the point. The family is protecting her, and the family is, a, is attacking um, 
Imangs Pura Madura. I love her name. Oh right. my god. Her name gives me life. Her name gives me I am from Pretoria. Okay. Bona. Oyana Pitori. Bona. When she said her name in the video, I was just like, and I listen, I'm like, yeah, Oyana Pitori. And then she's like, mom. So I'm like, yes, there it is. I was like, that's my girl. Hi. Yay. Mm-hmm. Like, I love her name. But yeah, Usayan, allegedly her dad is. And I am questioning how her parents raised her because how dare you leave your friend for dead? Basically. How dare you? And continue with your gig. Hmm? Dude. It's not funny. It's not funny because this girl could have died. What did she She said that she came out of the... Um, Sunroof. <laughs> and I'm just doing that. And I, I had to go find her. In a bad way, you know, in case, you know, people who are bigger get offended. No, but we're like, not body big. shaming. Yeah, but she's big. I, I, what sunroof? What car is this? What size sunroof is this? Because I didn't know who this girl was. I won't lie. I had to do my research. As soon as you, you sent me the story, I was like, what? This is wild. I watched the video. I was like, what? In what world? But we've had this conversation before, right? About the <laughs> friends you'll make and the people you'll meet in these streets, guys. These streets are mm. rough. They're like, dangerous. I'm not even surprised by the story in the sense that I, I, I've seen, I've heard, I've, I've experienced similar mm-hmm. tactics from people. Um, and again, like going back to what uh, Madura said, like, Linda, Gerata Dilo. Um, that's what I like, like her of things, and this is how we find ourselves in these situations. But hey, there are people out there like this, and I'm not saying that the story is true. I I don't know cyanide or I don't know what her what's her name cyanide. <laughs> what's her name? <laughs> no, seriously, I don't know this girl. I, I literally only heard about her today, but. <laughs> It's shady. The story is shady because another part, like there's so many parts of that video that I, I, I really want us to go into because there's a part where she said she did a live and then her mm. mom got a call mm. and she was told that it, ne- it needed to be a secret and she needed to take it down. I'm like, okay, mm. who called the mom? Uh, was it, apparently, I don't know who called the mom, but I'm guessing it's either her or her parents or them all together. But I definitely know that Cyanide's bougie uh, <laughs> uh, parents are in on it as well because they're also protecting their daughter. They're like, uh uh-uh, uh, you're not supposed to publish it's private. And I'm like, how is an accident private? Because the government has to add that to these stats. You, you know what? That part, that part, private. Because I want to say, when the car was written off, because the car had to be written off, right? Mm. Who did they report it to? And also, okay, but let's go back. I think we've moved too far along this. There's so many things that don't make sense about this story. When this girl was found, where was this other girl? She went to go look for help. That's what she said. She went to go. (laughs) She's lying. (laughs) <laughs> her car has just been wrecked it has just been wrecked and it is on the side of the road her friend is her fr- I, i'm using my fingers right now please understand her friend is in the car ha- make it make sense can someone make it make sense how did she end up leaving not knowing if her friend got help. Maybe she found out, okay, you know, your car is reported. They call the parents, da, da, da. Okay, your friend's in the hospital. The car has been taken in. Your parents have called, da, da, da. You're not calling your friend that weekend to be like, friend, are you okay? The wild part, she's tagging her in pictures mm. at, this e- at this event. Excuse mm. me. I'm like, okay, that's a, that's a special... You know what? I don't know. Allegedly... Allegedly, we don't know the facts, but this is a wild story. This is wild. Whose car was Cayenne? Cayenne? Cyanide? Cyanide driving? Because she no, had man, a what's, her, what's her name? Wait, how do you say her name again? 
Cayenne. Is it Cayenne? No. Like cars. So that's like, oh, see what? Oh, Oh, that's Cayenne. (laughs) That's a good way to put it. Bougie herself. 24K subscribers. Her comments and chats have been disabled. Oh, wait. Oh, no. It's it's enabled again. There we go. Cyanide. Yeah. Well, one of her old videos. It's a 2020 video, I think. She only she the one that I saw that had the comments and chats off was also it was the one where she's in Cape Town because remember she talked about her yeah, going to Cape Town. Yes, yes, and she was like she went to Cape Town, then she went to Durban after. Yeah, so the one for Cape Town, the comments were off. They might be back on. I, I'm not sure, but yo, I uh, people you know people are saying that cyanide is always wrong in her friendships done like apparently this girl's messy she just moves funny there she moves funny oh cyanide bougie apparently she took all her stuff inside the car she took the alcohol yes there was alcohol in the boot right yeah that's she took the alcohol she took the make her makeup bag she took everything okay wait you see this is why the ex and Mm. i think this is why the girl was like this is a a shady situation because Mm -hmm. if your car was wrecked how did the liquor survive Seven feet down a bridge, by the way. Do you know those roads go down in? How are they? That's what I'm trying to understand is how did you... And then how did she also get there intact? Okay, I did see somebody posted um, a picture of her with scratches on her arms where she's like, last night was rough or something like that. I, it looked like somebody took a, sh- a screenshot of a story or something that she had posted. But I'm like, how are you also in physical form able to go perform and host that same weekend, right after. Like, there's so many things that don't make sense. Unless you were not in that accident. I I don't see how you were so protected that you had virtually no injury and you were able to perform that same weekend, that same evening, while your friend has both arms damaged, basically. Both arms. Like, make it make sense. It's also about the part where, you know, after an accident or after something traumatic happens to you, you don't have the energy. I'll make it re- I'll make reference to Durban Gogo. Ne? Durban Gogo, mm-hmm. she didn't continue with her performances that she had booked for the 9th of August because she was so hurt, traumatized, and sad about the deaths of her fellow colleagues, right? Mm. And she couldn't perform. So mm-hmm. when you just came out of a horrific accident where you were rolled down seven feet down a bridge, and then when I got into the house, did you survive? What's up, Maya? When I will perform, I like nothing happened. I know you are not part of that accident. Mm-mm. Well, hey, listen, we don't know how other people respond. We all respond to trauma differently. I am side eyeing this entire situation, though. It makes no I am sense. Too. It, it really makes no sense, but I assume things will continue to reveal themselves as time goes along because what a wow. Yeah, and, and also wow. Cyanide Bougie needs to <laughs> release, release a, a, a video telling her side of the story and she must explain how was she able to take out all her belongings and still continue to the lodge. How, how do you continue working after being traumatized like that? What the cyan cyan cyanide cyan bougie <laughs> has a lot of explaining to do. She's she does. Oh, she's dang. Good luck for her. How old are these girls? They're like nineteen, twenty. They're youngings. Oh, they're young, young. Mm, they're very young, young. Yo, that is crazy. That is crazy. Yeah. Hella, hella crazy. Speaking of youngings, uh, Sophie Ndava's song released. <laughs> that song is a jump, though. That song is a jump, though. Low key. It's a jump. Though. It's a nice song. It's a nice song, man. It is. It, it's a vibe. It's yeah. such a vibe. I like it. And, and kudos oh. to him for being brave enough to call out his stepdad like that. You know, it's not every young man that's able to have the balls to call out their stepdad or their dad or their parent for for being wrong. 
Hey, bruh. And he went in. He did not hold back. Fake gangster yeah. with a fake roly. Uh, you know what? <laughs> just, I did not expect it when I heard it, though. I was just like, whoa, wait, wait. I was like, this beat is nice. This beat, like, alone, I would listen to the song regardless. But then when he kept on going in, talking about how Max was with his mom simply because she wanted to, he wanted to use her fame. And I was like, you know what? To be fair, I side-eyed that entire relationship. But I was like, you know what? It's none of my business. They're not in the public eye that much. They don't do a lot of messy stuff. So, like, I'm just going to mind my business on this entire situation. But that that guy looked very opportunistic. Like, you know you know that conversation we had about, like, male gold diggers? Like, mm-hmm. he gives me male, male gold digger vibes all the way through. Like, and apparently, mm. that's exactly what he is. Um, yeah. And I'm also questioning his businesses. Does he really own those businesses or he's just a friend? Because mm. this man is known to own a lot of businesses, but then now the son is saying that, uh-uh, you're fake. My mama makes more money than all your baby mamas combined. I was like, what? Yo. And and you know me, I'm from Soweto. So we know about Max Chaba and his scandals and his side chicks and whatnot. Bro, when he, wait, the part where he said that you were cheating on my mom with my friend. Dude, he likes them young, though. We know that in the hood. His stepson's friend. Yeah. And, oh, you know what? If you're going to be messy, and don't be messy. But if you're going to be messy, don't, don't do it at, like so close to home. Learn yeah, how to separate give, your stuff, man. Yeah, don't give young kids or your... your your wife's kid a reason to disrespect you listen the moment he got with his friend it was over like he could say anything about him that's what i'm saying that mm-hmm. as a man this this should be a message to all the men out there and all the upcoming old men out there don't fuck with your boy with your child's or your stepchild's friends, friends. because they will disrespect you hmm. lady tag are you you playing in the same pool bruh yeah, don't do that because if you're doing that, put yourself in their shoes. Are you gonna respect your parent if they're busy with your friend? You're not. No, so you can't. Yeah. So just don't do it. His talent is mainly maybe spewed by personal experiences because that track, that track is a hot track. No, it's a hot track, but. Well, to be fair, a lot of hip hop comes from pain. Um, the music, the the poetry, the ra- the rapping, all of it came from his place of pain. So, I guess this is the best way he could push out that frustration, man. Like, yo, that is wild. That is crazy. What that guy did to his mom. I'm glad that they're not together anymore. Me too. Oh, girl, are you okay? So speaking. On painful music, mm-hmm. this upcoming, upcoming, it's been upcoming for I don't know how long now. We've had, since I've been counting, I believe we've had four release dates so far. Four release dates, guys. There were two listening parties, and apparently it was supposed to drop on the 15th of August, and then it got pushed out again to like the 22nd or something. It is a myth. This album will never happen. This album is like that um, Dr. Dre album that we all waited for for like 13 years. Listen, it's just never going to happen. It's never. It's like this album is like Rihanna's next album. It's not happening. Like it's never happening. It's just, it's over. It's just, it's over. I'm hurt. Um, um, I just feel that like if you have to have two listening sessions for your album, your, you know your album not going to do great. You're just trying to lure your supporters to actually support you because if you're investing so much time, so much effort, so much theatrics to your album um, release, I mean, by the time your album is released, your fans have no choice but to say it's a great album, even though it's not mm-hmm. because you put so much effort and time to it. No, because he and he hyped it up so much. Hmm. That's my problem is that, like, set a low bar so that when you do exceed expectations, it's really in, like incredible. Right now, the bar is high for Kanye, the bar is so high. And with that, 
I think another album that's supposed to drop around the same time as Drake, or has he dropped that already? He hasn't dropped yet. He's still about to drop, right? And I think the release mm-hmm. dates are the same. Um, Drake's going to take this one, honestly. To be fair, I think Drake's going to take this one. He's going to take this one because Drake has a wide fi- fan base. Like, everybody loves Drake. Mm-hmm. He and does. Right now with Kanye... The building up of anticipation, critics are going to be harsh on him. They're going to be so harsh because he built it up so much that they're going to say it's not that great just because. Even if it was great the first time he like did the listening party and everyone would have loved it, the fact that he's dragged it on this long, the critics are going to have him. They're going to have him and they're going to be like, eh, the album sucked. And you know how Kanye gets when you tell him his album sucks, right? But Kanye needs to accept that he's not a great artist. He's a great producer. Unlike Drake, where Drake is just an artist. And he thrives on that. And he does exceptionally well on it. Whereas Kanye, as an artist, let's be real. Let's be honest, guys. He's not the greatest of artists, but he's a fucking dope-ass producer. Okay. So, but to be fair, Drake also has a lot of assistance. Whereas... I feel like we can't compare the two in the sense that Kanye and Drake are two different types of artists. In the sense that uh, Drake gets a lot of assistance. He's got producers on his side. He's got writers on his side. He's got, he's got a whole team. Whereas mm. Kanye, he mainly works in isolation. He is most, for the most part, he is the team. And then he'll yeah, have Foster. another person here and there. We are fast that he needs to have ghostwriters in order for him to be a great artist because you can't have it all. That's that's just the you, it's like saying that you want to run a whole company, but then you want to run one man. You want to do the accounting, you want to do the marketing, you want to do the selling of the business, you want to do sales, you want to do everything by yourself. You can't. But a jack of all <laughs> trades, but a master of none. Yeah, okay, he's a he's a master of one though, and I think that the problem is trying to he's trying to be a master of all trades. Oh yeah, you and you can't. You really need assistance, guys. Like, there's no country that's solely running by itself. Be real. Even China is not running by itself. It they relies on, on other economies. Be, yeah. Mm. So I think maybe that's where Kanye West's problem is that he wants he wants to be, he was running for president not so long ago. <laughs> Yeah, That's how much of a one-party body he wants to be, and he's failing at it. Let's be real. He's failing. Listen, Kanye just needs to get some help and some healing and some rest. But that's mm-hmm. what this album was supposed to be for him. And I think the reason why he's delaying also is because releasing Donda will also metaphorically for him be releasing Donda and allowing him to move past her passing. And I think he's not ready to do that. I don't think he's at a he's in a position right now where he's ready to be like, you know what? Um, it's been a while since my mom passed. I'm ready to move on past the pain and move on to the part where I start to celebrate who she was. He's still he's still trapped in the pain, and I think that's why he's he's scared of releasing the album. I think Kanye's scared to drop down that. Like that's why he keeps going back and trying to fix it and make it even better than it was. And it's like, sir, it was fine. It was fine the first time. Just drop the freaking album. Just gosh. Mm, I hear you, but also in the same breath. I feel like Kanye West is such a, how do you put it? He's such a good uh, PR stuntman. <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah. So question is, he will release Donda because he's created so much hype around it. Uh, he's invested so much money around it. But then the question is, beyond Donda, is he going to go back and say he's not okay because of his mom's passing? Or is he going to be completely gone from it? Well, only time will tell, really. Mm, only time, only will, time tell. will tell. He has to drop the album first to really see what will happen after that. Mm, Until then. That's true. That's true. But... I don't know. I'm looking forward to the production of the album. I'm not necessarily looking forward to the artistry of the album because he's also adding a lot of features, I see. Mm. He keeps on adding features and the feature that he's well, he hinted or that he's gonna feature, I'm not sure, it's Jay-Z. Yeah. Well, that was in the first listening party. I don't know. 
Listen, I hope it's in the final, like it makes the final cut for the album. Yeah, Kanye West is Barry. But anyway, I see Kolapo. Kolapo, get talk, but I see Kolapo. Okay, so coming back to the fact that there are albums that we'll never hear about again, we have to celebrate and give it a round of applause for Miss Rihanna because Bad Girl Riri is now a billionaire, guys, a whole billionaire. She secured a bag. She she secured all the bags. Somebody, I, I think I was listening to um, another show the other day, and they were like, Rihanna, the only other woman in entertainment that's ahead of Rihanna in terms of money is Oprah. So in entertainment right now, when we're looking at women and wealth, it's Oprah and then it's Rihanna. Like, who would have thought Miss Pondy Replay would be second to Oprah? Nobody would have thought, but I love Rihanna, I love her hustle, I love how she, you know, like, honestly speaking, I understand why Rihanna's not going to give us another album anytime soon, because the music industry is such a rough and dark space, Mm. Uh, let's, let's not overlook the downplays of the entertainment industry, especially Hollywood, and I understand why Rihanna... Mm when she grabbed that opportunity to do something that she's passionate about, something she that she really loves. separated herself quick. Yeah, she was like, ooh, I'm out of here. Damn, I'm going to push this hustle and I'm going to get my coins and mm-hmm. I'm going to be the best person that I can be for myself. I don't see I, I don't see us getting an album from Rihanna anytime soon. Shame. The closest we'll hear, I think the closest we'll get to Rihanna on a a song is if she gets onto a song with ASAP, you know, because they're together. I, th- I think that's the closest we'll get to hearing Rihanna's music, like new music coming from Rihanna. But that's never going to happen. I knew it wasn't going to happen when she started dating the billionaire. I was like, this girl is way past us. Mm-hmm. True. She, she just wants us to buy her underwear, her makeup. Yeah. Her that's what She's she just wants. like, buy my stuff. <laughs> like, music is whatever. Buy my stuff. That girl is long past the girl, the young Indi- um, what island girl that she used to be when she first came up. Like, she's definitely not that girl anymore. I think that she low-key is. I think that that was her goal, ultimately. Because if, you look, if you're comparing her to, apparently, her nemesis, mm-hmm. her alleged nemesis, Beyonce, Beyonce's not really business-minded. Hmm. Yeah. Oh, yo, yo. Can you hear that? Do you hear that? No. It's it's the hive coming for you, bruh. The hive. <laughs> coming for you, bruh. No, but she's not. <laughs> you can come for me. I can prove it. I will compare Beyonce to, to Rihanna when it comes to business, and Rihanna mm-hmm. takes mm-hmm. it hands down. Rihanna is business minded. Beyonce is more of an entertainer and an artist, and like like we said earlier on, you, we all have our different capabilities in life. True. And just because you, you're you really good at something, it does not mean that you're going to be good at everything. And unfortunately, that's just how life is. Ish. Ish. But congratulations to her for being a million, a billionaire. A billion, boo, a billion. billion. Bruh, girl is doing the things. To be fair also, right? We can also say that, you know, a lot of people used to slam Rihanna and say that she couldn't actually sing. His live performances sucked, you know. That's one thing that uh, her her alleged enemy has over her is that she's an amazing performer. Yeah. She will will always have that over Rihanna. But, like, Billy? Dang. That is mad impressive. I am so happy for Rihanna. I'm so happy for her success. The Fenty brand is growing. Growing. I still don't have anything Fenty, but I'm I'm aspiring to to getting something one day. <laughs> I can't afford it though. I've said. Have you seen the price tag on those things? No. Listen, me and my friend were talking about it the other day. We we're like, I no myself to support black businesses, but I, we are not the target market yet. <laughs> <laughs> we are not. We are not LSM ten plus, bruh. Ten mm, plus. That that is LSM ten plus for real. For real. Can we address <laughs> this? Our favorite. I think everybody's favorite LSM ten plus individual 
or so easy and what's going on in his life guys i think every week something new is it's just it's just something new is happening with Sumizi every every day. Like when you check the headlines, there's something new every single day. Okay, my problem with Sumizi is that like every week we have to talk about Sumizi and like guys, stop making Sumizi trend because you're gonna make me look like the person that's just like guys. If I like, there are so many. Th- like a lot mm, mm, and mm, mm. every week it's like it's like you guys want information and now you're talking about clothes i'm like oh god damn it y'all have to take it Girl, when i saw the story <laughs> i was laughing we were talking about something like this like a year ago even yeah we were oh my goodness <laughs> you're like where's shaz where's mm. shaz he had mm, mm, mm. Okay, so <laughs> there's a Gucci account on Instagram that calls out a South African celebrities for wearing fake Gucci, uh, Gucci specifically Gucci um, clothing, right? And they spotted some easy wearing a fake Gucci clothing. And I'm saying fake <laughs> in inverted commas because... Um, there are a lot of American artists that wear your so-called counterfeit out, um, uh, um, mm-hmm. outfits, but they don't get called out for that because they're in America and we assume that they're wearing the real shit, right? Mm. So there's a clothing um, boutique called Neiman's, Mar- Neiman's Marcus. Yes, I've heard, I've heard of it. Do you, are you telling me that Neiman Marcus is... A group under the LVMH Corporation. I have no idea, but I, not, I I know from what I've heard that they sell high end brands at a Neiman Market. They Neiman. I can't even say it properly. Neiman yeah. Marcus. Mm. Is mm. Neiman Marcus a franchise or a group or a subsidiary or a parent or a child company under the LVMH Group? I would assume that they would be more like a um a reseller. But they all but people who go to Neiman Marcus don't don't buy used. Oh snap. So what are they selling? Exactly. That's what I'm saying. That <laughs> allegedly. <laughs> allegedly. Wait. So essentially, because the idea here is that you're not, it's not genuine unless you buy it from the actual retail store of the brand. Thank you. And how many artists do we know in America that have bought their items from Neiman Marcus? 21 Savage has a song when he talks about walking into Neiman Marcus and spending a light $50,000 at the shop. Neiman Oh my gosh, the internet is listening to us. Literally, I typed in N I N E. No, I actually typed in N I and it literally filled in Neiman Marcus for me. On the Googler. Okay, wait. Pop that. It's a boutique. It's literally. Yeah. Uh, and boutiques are notorious then. for selling um, counterfeits, it's not necessarily fakes. How do you how do we how do we phrase this? Okay, because then there's one there there are items of clothes I know with designer clothes and like high end high end brands that you can get factory faulted clothes, and those are often yes. sold at different stores um at a discounted price, a heavily discounted price because mm-hmm. there's a flaw in the stitching or whatever. Mm-hmm. Okay, okay. So are we are we are we. Are we are we alluding to the fact that these are the type of products that individuals would be purchasing? Yeah. And also, doesn't Keisha Ka'o, Gucci Man's wife, yeah. doesn't she own a boutique that sells red bottoms too? <laughs> so if you want to call out Sumizi and you're going to say that Sumizi is wearing fake, then call out all the other American artists or American celebrities that go to these boutiques and they buy these art, these these clothing or these name brands from them. All I'm saying is, 
I think that this account on Instagram can also call out American artists or American celebrities because mm. we're looking at Hollywood right now. And our economies are not the same. Like, if, if hey. you compare us to those people, like, compare us to people who live a similar socioeconomic structure as us. Like, that's that's not fair. It's not a fair standard to put on us. That's just, just doesn't make sense. You know what it yeah. reminds me of? It's like this whole, I don't know if you remember, this Birkin bags were trending for a very long time. Mm. People were talking about Birkin bags. Mm-hmm. I think there was, it was Saweetie or somebody from the States who said that she was mm-hmm. a man who could get her a Birkin bag or something like that. And that's what we're talking about when we say get the bag. But okay, my thing is, it's like, everyone's claiming to have all of these Birkin bags, but aren't Birkin bags the, like one of the hardest bags to get? Like, even if you can afford it, you have to be on like a waiting list before you can even get considered to purchase it, you know? Like, it's, it's not even a matter of I can afford a Birkin. No, no, you need to get on the list. Are you on the list of people who are able to access this Birkin bag? And then from there, it's like, okay, now you can collect your Birkin when it is available to you. So, it's, yeah, I think more people than we realize are wearing knockoffs, counterfeits, or whatever you want to call them, off-brand. They're wearing off-brand clothing, and we're just pretending we don't see it, whereas sometimes we choose to highlight it with some other people, and that's not fair. Listen, yeah, people, guys, knockoffs have been a thing. In SA, they are very popular. Like, knockoffs are everywhere. Double standards, man. Double standards. Mm, it's true first world country versus third world country real housewives of potomac oh my goodness the ladies of potomac Uh it is a whole mess but um another episode is expected to come out where hey marriages are rocky potomac i feel like everyone's marriage is always rocky on that show We've got uh, Robin, who's not even married yet. Still waiting for her to go down the aisle. But Robin's going through a depressed moment. People are not sure if she's lazy or she's depressed. But she's talking about this and Giselle confronts her and says, well, not confronts her, but she's like, so what have you done to change what's going on? And Robin's like, no, she hasn't done anything. And one of the things that Robin mentioned is like, it's Kwame, what's his name? Juan. 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 <laughs> Why do I think Kwame? Uh, Juan said that it wasn't attractive. He doesn't find it attractive. So mm. Giselle, and this is so shady in my opinion, because Giselle after that says, is that why he doesn't want to go down the aisle? I was like, oh, those are fighting yeah. words right there. Those are but fighting I words. I feel like the friendship that Robin and Giselle have is a friendship that is very honest from a personal level. Mm. And I understand why they are still friends even six seasons in, because I thought that I, by third season, these ones, they'll start I don't fighting. Wanna, yeah. I don't want to lie. I've watched the real ho- real housewives of Potomac from season one, episode one to date. And I can honestly say that from season one, I honestly thought that Giselle and Robin by season three, they will be over. It's not going to last or whatever. And I'm surprised that so many years later, after everything that they have been through on the show, they're still friends. And I understand why they, they're still friends because they really give raw, honest opinions. They don't filter shit out. You know, mm-hmm. same same reason why, um, same, re- same, same reason why Robin was like, she felt like, um, uh, Giselle and who, who, Jamal. Yeah. Uh, Giselle and Jamal were not really in love when they were dating. Like, you know, she, like they very honest. Yeah, they honest about the situations. And I think sometimes as friends, we need friends who are like that. We need friends who are going to be honest to you about situations. Mm. Not friends that are going to tell you what you need or what you want to hear, but friends that are going to give you the reality of it all yeah. to say, listen, is this the reason why he doesn't want to walk down the aisle with you? Because you wake up late? Because you, he finds you lazy? Mm. He doesn't find you attractive. Mm. Yeah. And and I feel like Robin is the one that's literally making it work for the house. 
because you know she's still pushing the merch line. Mm-hmm. The merch line is growing. She even got her mom to assist her. You know, she's really putting in all the work. And for who's this guy, Guan? <laughs> For Guan not to be so invested in the house and for Guan to be so easy and to say, Yena, he, he's not lazy. He gets up and he goes to work. And for yeah. Robin to be so exhausted to a point where she oversleeps and she sleeps late. Like, imagine having to own a business, run a household, take care of the financials of the family, wake up the kids. Mm, mm, mm. It's a lot. Which is... What you're saying is so deep because actually in hindsight, maybe she's overworked and that's why she's so tired. But we always look at things from a lens of right now. Like we're looking at, right now, if you look at the situation, it just looks like she's depressed because COVID. It's like maybe because of COVID, she realized just how much of the responsibility was on her. Mm. Listen, we don't know, allegedly, but allegedly. that also would make sense as to why she's feeling the way that she does. It's like, this is a mo- she had a moment to rest and then she just was too anxious to go back into overdrive and always working and always needing to be responsible for something. Mm, and that's how I feel like how Robin is. I feel like Robin is the responsible one in the whole entire relationship. Because if one cannot wake up the kids in the morning, god damn it, you've been up you've been up since six AM. Yeah, why don't you wake them up? Yeah, why don't you wake up the kids? Why don't you make sure that the kids are attending school online? Like why? Why are you waiting for me to do it? Like if you can see I'm not doing it, well why don't you do it? And and I feel like Guan needs Robin, and that's why he cannot mm. completely cut her off. Because mm. probably the connections that he has they're affiliated with Robin. That's the only reason why a nigga will only stick around with the woman that he doesn't love. If the woman is bringing rem- in the bags. Because mm-hmm. mm-hmm. remember, Robin comes from the PR background, so she's well connected. She knows a lot of people. Exactly. That entire situation. And then, and then we get into the other troublesome um, relationship of old people, Karen and the so-called Black Bill Gates. My gosh. Ooh, the, the Hugers. The Hugers. Those two, those two, you know, I, listen, let's leave those old people alone. Yeah, let's I just think leave those too. old people alone. They, but we need to also talk about the most interesting thing I think that's happening this season. Wendy's new body, Happy mm. and Ness. Happy and Ness, I'm here for it. I'm here for this new body of hers. Like, she's just out here with a skimpy clothes. Doing the most, showing shoulder in lectures. I was just like, yes, girl. Where has this Wendy been the whole time? Okay. R- regarding Wendy, now, this season, because this is her second season on the show. Mm-hmm. Last season, she she made a very um, verbal statement about how both her and Eddie's parents are... They don't, they don't gel. They, they like mm. oil and water. They don't fuck with each other, basically, right? Yeah. And then they still forced the marriage. Mm-hmm. And allegedly, the reason why Wendy got a new body is because mm. Eddie mm-hmm. is out here with some other women doing the most, right? Yeah. We heard that. Um, that story is still about to unfold on the show, yeah. Wendy's body has improved definitely but also her dress sense has yeah. improved this girl's got style now yeah she went to got herself a good ass stylist right mm-hmm. so she's giving me i mean mia is right when she says that your marriage is a problem and mia was on to something well she is currently on to something when she's saying that mm. but wendy this season is giving me monique last season Ooh. That's not good. Sorry. I just started last season and I started after with the whole Monique and Candace situation. And I'm team Candace. You never want to be the Monique of any situation. Exactly. Mm. So Monique, the reason why she came for Candace is because Candace was the easy target. Yeah. She didn't come at the any other 
housewives besides Candace. And that she felt like Candace is the easy target, so she went for Candace, right? Mm-hmm. But I feel like Wendy is also doing the same thing this season With where Mia. she's going for the easy targets and she's going for Mia because Mia is the new girl. She's going for Mia and she's going for Giselle because Giselle's coming with the rumors. Because remember her and Giselle and Robin were really cool last season. Mm, but now, now they're she's not. she's changed the allegiance. She's now Team Karen. Her and mm-hmm. Karen made peace at the reunion. Now they're friends and buddy buddy. Mm, I saw that. I saw that. I was like, so okay, is, cool. And Mia I think that's cool where girl. her beef with Mia comes from. I don't think she's attacking Mia because she's an easy target. I think Mia definitely triggers a lot of insecurities that she has about herself but then more so because she shifted alliances and now is friends with karen karen brought me i remember she can't afford for karen to have another bestie she needs to be karen's bestie that's why she's going to karen and asking about business what i'm questioning right now is her and candace's relationship because candace is the one that brought wendy into the group last season yes Ooh. So what happened between those two? That is what I'm questioning this season to say, you guys came in here, you were tight, you were thick as thieves. Mm-hmm. What happened this season? Why is this one now being friends with your so-called frenemy? Because remember, Candace and Karen are not really... They're not friends. Yeah. So well, why is she now being friends with Karen instead of being sticking to Candace? What happened between that relationship? So what's happening right now between Candace and Wendy is very weird because in the recent episode that I watched, it's where Candace is hosting the girls at this venue, da da da. There was some shady awkwardness that happened where Wendy was sent to the other guest house or the cottage on the property mm-hmm. with Karen. And it was like, I thought you guys were friends. But then even in the way Candace and Candace, oh, she's slick at the mouth, guys. I love that woman. She, she said something that it gave me that hint of mm, there's some shadiness happening between the two of them. But mm-hmm. she's not going to address it right now because I understand. It's like, I would feel very weird if my friend that I brought onto the show is now friends with the person that I stopped being friends with in the same season I brought you on the show. And you guys are not friends. And you know how I feel about this woman and what she did. And you also seem to agree with me, but now you're friends with her? Yeah, it's questionable. Wendy's moving funny, but you know what Wendy is doing? Wendy is securing her position in the show. She is. She will be there for seasons to come. 